Hi everyone in YouTube land. Okay, so we have finally come to the top 10 Marvel movies of all time, in my opinion, for the last 30 years. And this is as our tribute to uh, Stan Lee, my hero and founder of Marvel Comics. And most of these films he had a role in, so that's pretty awesome. Well, all these ones he has. But yeah, he was one of the creative minds and directors behind all the films in the last 30 years. And so this was our little tribute to him. And we get to the top 10 finally. So you probably already know in your minds which ones we've gotten to and which ones we haven't. You probably got an idea. Okay, so who's in which place and how far is your favorite one rank? Well, in the number 10 spot, we have Iron Man. Everyone's like, that's pretty low, right, for Iron Man? Iron Man was an amazing film. Love this movie. I love the fact that they showcase his very first armor. It looks very similar to the one in the comic book, which I loved. Um, I love the fact that uh, he's this, he comes as this precipice, this crossroads where he has to decide whether or not he wants to be the same person people see him as or be this hero that he, I guess, was made to be. And he designs this suit initially to escape um, an evil terrorist and utilize, decides to utilize this as a weapon to defend against all those who would bring terror to the world. Especially those who use his own equipment against him, his own weaponry. So, really awesome movie. I love the transition from from in the timeline between when he was, you know, this little um, kind of the the playboy, you know, all the way to the philanthropist. I love the way his his suits evolved. Um, love his little robot that helps him do it. it was gives a little personality and comic relief there. But I love the transition of Iron Man from from you know his exploration to the full you know realization of who he is and how what he's capable of, and even though it was like fun for the audience to see him say I'm Iron Man in the movie, going again for an origin story they're putting a decade or two of, of comic books into one movie gets to the point where he actually admits he's Iron Man because for the longest time we all knew him to be the bodyguard to uh, Tony Stark. The actor they got to play it was amazing. The graphics, obviously, at this point were amazing. Love the outfit, love the suit. It was probably one of the best origin stories of all time. I mean, and like I said, I love Captain America. I ranked this one higher than Captain America's origin story because, again, it moved better. It it was much better for the cinematic audience. Uh, it wasn't as dry, but it definitely, and it was very dynamic. It was very, I loved about, about it. Which brings us to the number nine slot. And the number nine slot, again, this is where we're getting really hard when we get to this level, because I'm like, who is higher than these ones? I mean, I mean, everyone loves Spider-Man. Spider-Man is everyone's, like, favorite character, I think. Since we're little boys, Spider-Man everything, Spider-Man this. And so it's hard to put, like, the highest Spider-Man only at number nine, but let's be honest. Spider-Man's had a lot of continuity issues up to this point. And so the reason why this is number nine is because, first of all, it's the best Spider-Man movie they've made so far. It's amazing. I love the... Um, the continuity about his age, much closer related to a high school student. His aunt was a little bit too young, I think, but I guess with each one they made younger, they made the aunt younger too. We never hear about the uncle or why he becomes Spider Man. They don't go back and rehash that. I guess because it's old news, we've seen it twice now. But for the sake of an origin story, this is a third rehash. It's the only character that we've had a third rehash of an origin story, and it's still successful either way. So it didn't kill it. It, it continued, but it would be nice to have that little recap to realize why he's the way he is, uh, because we wonder, we wonder how old her, his uncle was if his aunt was so young. So, yeah, everything about the uncle. Um, I like the interactions where we have Iron Man popping in and out of these, these higher mov these movies, like with Spider-Man. It made it so much greater to have Iron Man pop into there and have an influence and impact on Spider-Man's life and his journey. This movie, which is really, really well done. Um, I like the, the origin story. I mean, yes, there's a bit of a continuity issue with MJ again. I kind of go back to the whole MJ thing. But at the end of the day, you can't fault it. This movie was amazing. The new character bringing in um, the Vulture was a great choice. I love who they picked to play Vulture. Michael Keaton is one of my favorites. We all know him as Batman, so now he's crossed over universes, which is amazing. Um, I like the dynamic between him and... And we actually had, liked Vulture. You got to like Vulture, but you didn't really hate him. So he was a really good villain, um, good match for Spider-Man, very good production, awesome movie.
can't be happier about it. And it was really hard to rank it only at number nine. But then again, all the other ones are so epic. It's really hard to put any kind of you know, value on them in comparison. It's just, it's really good. Which comes to our number eight one. And that is Doctor Strange. Again, another character that's kind of off the beaten path. Uh, more obscure than some of the main Avenger characters. Unless you're really in tune with the Avengers and all the different characters and the roles they play on the team. He is a Sorcerer Supreme. He battles demons in other realms. He keeps our world away from there, away from the darkness of other universes. And so he's a very dynamic, very interesting character, very powerful. Uh, one of my favorite characters in this whole series. I love Strange. The movie, for an origin movie, again, there were some slight continuity issues. If there were some um, timeline issues, it's because we're trying to bring him into the fold with a team that's already developed over the last 10 years. But the movie in itself was really amazing. The graphics were amazing. I loved his outfit. Loved the character they give to his cloak, which is really awesome. Um, definitely an amazing movie. Off the beaten path, things why people like about Thor and Guardians and Strange. They're not they're, you know, they're typical Avenger movies. They're different and they're magical and they got different elements to it that are completely all, all, you know, outer-worldly. So, amazing movie. Love it. Great addition to the Avengers, and I'm so excited to see where he goes. Again, I have high hopes for the Strange series to see if it gets even better as it goes along, like a lot of these ones have. Um, number seven, we're back to Captain America with Winter Soldier. Love the Winter Soldier. Love who they picked for the Winter Soldier. The battles between him and the Captain were epic. They were amazing. We get to see different editions of the Avengers in this movie, so it made it more like a, an X-Men movie or a Guardians movie. There were a lot of different characters, a lot of different personalities, dynamic fighting skills. So awesome to see his partner come in, and like the Falcon and Black Widow. I mean, this movie was so amazing. Action completely through throughout. Um, espionage. We got Easter eggs all through this thing. You know, um, we got so many great cliffhangers. That's what makes the movie so great is when you have these cliffhangers, it keeps it makes it more interesting and engaging. So you want to watch the sequel, you want to know more. Unlike some of these other ones that were standalones, like the Black Panther, um, you, there's just so much more elements and dynamic in this that you were like, I got to see more, I got to know more, I want to know where this leads. And they always leave us with a cliffhanger. So this movie's really great. I love the interconnection with the, uh, the secret endings at the very end of the credits. But this movie was amazing. And we were so excited to see what they would do with Bucky going into the Falling movie, how he would play in the Avengers movie. So, definitely a really good uh, movie, standalone on its own. <clears throat> but we know this is to be a sequel to the Captain America movie, and we also knew we could expect a third one, since the third Iron Man had already, at this point, come out. Which brings us to number six, Guardians of the Galaxy. If any movie is more dynamic than you know, the Winter Soldier, it's Guardians. Guardians is just amazing. It's epic. When we first see these guys on the screen, we get that soundtrack, which is awesome. You can't do have a better soundtrack. It rejuvenated the whole genre of music. Our character um, is played by a great actor. I think it was a good role for him, for his personality, that is. I think, like, they couldn't have done a better <clears throat> casting call for this group. I had never heard of um, Groot or Rocket before this. I don't know why. Again, like I said, it's more obscure comic because it's off-worldly. It interacts with Avengers here and there. So I never even thought about Groot or Rocket. So I thought they were characters that have been long since in the, in the universe, in the comic books. I didn't see much of them. Um, I didn't collect for a very long period. So my knowledge of them is limited. But if, but if the comic book is anything remotely like this, the comic book, I'm sure, is amazing. This movie was awesome. I couldn't speak as to the continuity issues, like I said before, because they didn't click the comic. I thought it was, the dynamic of it and the way they did it in the movies was just cinematic excellence. Um, the way the characters played against each other, the way the movie moved, it was quick. It was action-packed. The comic relief was there. There's so many different eye candies as far as the makeup and technology, the different characters and the way they bantered against each other. I mean... There's just so much cool stuff in this. It's just complete eye candy. This is, I can't fault this movie. And so all the movies before us is the top five. I mean, they got to be like supreme movies to beat the Guardians. So in our top five, we start off with 
Ragnarok. Easily my favorite Thor movie of all time and one of the, my favorite Avenger movies of all time. There is just so much good in this. I mean, they just got better and better. And I'm not saying that the parent company, I won't say their name, who bought them out made the improvements. But seriously, this movie was so well done. Um, from our villain at the beginning where he's hanging upside down in chains and, the, and he's, he's got this villain, this devil-like creature, demon, and looking down on it and all the little demons that come running out of it. It just, from that moment on, it was just amazing. The, the music they chose, the theme song is amazing for this. It totally embodies the whole movie. It, we get to see his powers develop from where they were at the beginning and his just his character and his personality. I mean, this is a superb Avenger movie, a Thor movie. Um, you get to see some new characters come in, some sidekicks, if you will. We get to see Loki again. I love the guy they have cast to play Loki. He's amazing. His look, the whole costume, the banter between him and Thor is amazing. Uh, the dialogue is awesome. And to see them work together to bring down uh, a bigger foe than even they could do alone, which is their sister we hear in this movie. Um, we get to see the, the, I hate to say espionage, but the kind of um, the, the secrets within the family, the, the, the untold story, which is really amazing which kind of brings all to a head uh, between the brothers and the sister. And then we get to see these really epic battle scenes. Um, we get to see multiple realms and worlds. This movie was just epic, so well done. And at the end of the day, it just sends you chills through your spine. When you see that end scene, he's come down with that hammer and the lightning and just takes her out. I mean, this is such a great movie, such so well done. And to be able to expand the Marvel Universe that much further and show the connection between the characters. This movie was awesome and got you excited for what was to be seen next, which we saw this giant ship come and uh, pretty much attack them at the very end of the movie. We all kind of knew, hey, this has to be Thanos. You know, we get to, so we get to see, you know, talk about the, the Infinity Stones again. We get to see what almost indefinitely, indefinitely was Thanos coming to take out the last, you know, stopping ground before they get the final stones before he gets the final stones. So, which is really cool. So I was excited to see that this movie couldn't be, I mean, if there was any continuity issues in it, you wouldn't even care that there was continuity issues in this movie because it was so well done and it was so much eye candy and it was just brilliantly made piece of art, which brings us to our fourth movie, which is the Avengers. Now, when we first saw this one coming out, months in advance. It was just so excited, so stoked. This is the first time ever there was a movie of this size, this caliber. This is because before Ragnarok, this is before the Guardians, this is before the interactions between different team members on like the Captain America movies. You have so many different characters, different walks of life, and different movies that were all coming together into one big climactic movie, which was just epic. It was amazing. The way they introduce each character and their abilities and how they interact with each other in the beginning was awesome. I like the way they did it. The bantering between them um, was really amazing. I like the the tension between the team when you were trying to bring them together. I like you know there's that turmoil like you have that how how's this going to end in the how are they going to bring them together. So it was really good. I like how they brought characters from the show in so that interlocked the TV show with the movie. I mean it was just the beginnings of something really awesome. We knew that they were going to like blow it out of the park with the next one. So, and then the way they interact with each other at the end of the battle scenes, the way they would um, fight alongside each other or use each other's strengths to their benefit, to the benefit of each other to fight them. It's just, it was the greatest thing ever to see uh, Loki being the great manipulator. And then the very end scene when we see Loki on the ground and they're all sitting there standing around, that was just the greatest thing ever. Uh, this movie was just definitely one of my top because it was so fun to watch. Nothing bad about it. I could watch it over and over and over again. And yet, we knew that the next movie was going to be even better. I mean, because Marvel has just been getting better and better, and the movies were uh, becoming more action-packed, more dynamic, more in uh, interconnected. So this was so exciting to see. The top three now. So with our third place spot, we got The Age of Ultron. So again, how do you determine which Avenger movie is better? I mean, we like, why would you pick Adultron over Avengers or 
Is the other one even higher than that? I mean, obviously we haven't pulled it out yet, maybe, right? It's just because, again, we're dealing with even more characters, even more dynamics. We have the two mutant characters. They don't ever say they're mutants. And I think that's what a lot of people make people upset about this one. It actually didn't rank as high as the first Avengers movie uh, as far as the critics go. And But it's just because they have these two new characters. They're one other aspect to the team. There was this tension, how they were tearing the team apart. Um, we saw the courts coming. And so, well, we saw... You know, in the winds, what was happening with um, the the tension between the team members and how they were going to play out with the uh, with the current stat, uh, status, the political status of actually the comic book at the time. This is years before the movie it was very much to the Civil War, which we knew was coming out very quickly. That they were going to have this separation, this anxiety, this kind of tearing of the team apart, and this was kind of the beginning of that. But the movie was. So well done. Um, I think Ultron was really amazing to see. I think Aldo didn't like it as much because it's such a short story for a dynamic character like Ultron to have, to be like come out and then five minutes later be like gone because he was in the comic book for such a long time and it took him a long time to get rid of him. And every once in a while he still pops up because he's a Viking virus. So again, and I liked the battle scenes. This were even more dynamic. They're more epic. There was more to it. There was more to see especially with the end scene when they were all in that confined spot. That was just so well done. Um, loved seeing this movie and definitely worthy of the third spot. When we go to the top two, we're looking at Civil War. Civil War was as good or better than any of these other previous movies. I mean, the way, again, coming out of Sokovia into the Accords, seeing these characters um, personalities come out and the political um, climate kind of intermixing with it and causing turmoil within the team and the ranks and people's beliefs and opinions really was hard to see in a way because again politics tends to screw everything up right and we'd see the division of the team we never want to see our team divide but it kind of makes it cool because then we're like we know they're going to get together we want to see them come back together stronger we, we hate to see them tear apart. We hate to see the negativity, but at the same time, it makes for such a really cool movie because we actually get to see our, our heroes battle each other. Before movies like this or comic books, when I was collecting, I didn't understand why heroes would actually fight heroes. But when you actually see the, the political climate and the environment, even society in the current world actually manipulates the comics, you see why they would happen. So we see comic book characters all the time fighting each other because they have different agendas, different things they're trying to accomplish. Like when Kevin comes back from the from the future and takes on Bishop from a different future, trying to prevent a different past into a different future, which is really cool. So we get to see all these different uh, Avengers head to head with each other and the bantering and the fighting and the, the way they interact with each other was so well done. The surprises with the Easter egg, giant man, I was so excited to see. I was so stoked. That was like one of the best parts of the whole movie for me. And to see... Um, you know, Tony kind of have it at the end, but then we still had some were captured and some got away. The whole movie was amazing. I, I loved it. I love the fact that Cap did get away. I still feel like he kind of won it, but to see them tear up like that and that climactic ending and then this cliffhanger of how are they going to bring this back together makes this one of the best movies of all time. People do like turmoil for some reason and they do like climactic endings and they like cliffhangers. And that's why they sell real good and it's one of the best movies of all time, as far as Avengers, even in all cinematic history, I think it was really one of the best movies ever done, produced. Which brings me to my number one choice of all the Marvel movies, and wouldn't you know it, it's Infinity War. We just saw this back in May. It's an amazing, epic adventure. I love it. And of course, you're like, why would you? Of course, you would pick that one, the most recent one, and also the one with the most people in it. But the reality is, it's just because of the the storyline is so the grandeur of it. I mean, we we look at all these heralds that came before, that were sent by him to pave the way for our Thanos, and the battles that ensued with the Guardians, and their um, foe, um, and then with some of the other characters. These it was just a way of building up to to him and give us like an idea of how strong he is. And we kind of wanted this this 
to be in a two-part series because like in traditional Marvel fashion, they always do a smaller group as they go into another episode or another comic book because they want to make this battle last. They want to make it big. They want to make it epic. And so they want you to understand why Thanos, why is he the best? And so that's why we let them win. They have to win. We have to cause even more turmoil than just the team being split up due to the cords. We have to cause just other chaos. So they're in complete and dire desperation to try to do something to save the world. And so this makes for the best climactic ending. To see the heroes divided, I mean, that's just crazy for me. I mean, we could see so many areas where, like, if if, if Iron Man didn't take them to the other planet and came straight back to Earth, or if the Guardians uh, leader, um, Star-Lord, didn't punch Thanos. I mean, how many other different things could we have seen in this movie that could have led towards... Uh, that end, but with all the other Easter eggs we saw in that way, with um, uh, Doctor Strange doing his little read of the future, and then at the end where he did exactly opposite what he said he would do by giving out the Infinity Stone instead of uh, letting his cast members or his team members die, it was so amazing. It was just, I mean, everything about this movie was just so grand, so amazing. The dynamic between the characters, the battle scenes. And it's so many characters, so much to put into a movie. And it was just grandeur. It was catastrophic. It was just, it was massive. It was, it was just one of the best movies I feel like in cinema of all time. I love the way they set up um, Thanos coming in. I, I love the way, again, the way the whole team was split up at the end of the day. And then we have some characters that couldn't even join the battle. So we're kind of wondering what's happening with them. And then there's the interconnection when we see the final see the second Ant-Man movie. So this is an amazing movie. I don't know how you guys feel about it. You always leave your comment below. But I feel like this is one of the best movies of all time. I'm so excited to see the sequel. I want to know how they bring everyone back. Because we know this one's going to be even grander with the battle scenes, with uh, the interaction with the characters. I want to know how they're going to take down Thanos. Who's going to be on Thanos' side? Because you know he's going to have somebody else with him. It's not going to just be him. Someone else is going to come in and herald in uh, the, the villain. So that's exciting to see. And if you have any, like I said, any opinions of what you felt about the top 50, where you think they should have been, what you think about the different movies, please leave your comments below. I would like to see them so we can debate on uh, any of those things I said before and see if uh, you guys fall in line with how I feel about the movies. It's been awesome showing these to you. And again, um, we wish Stanley and Stanley the best considering the hard time they've just gone through. Love you, Stanley. Miss you. Um, you're like my hero. I'm so glad you existed and created this Marvel universe that gives us so much joy. You're amazing. And um, again, to all the fans out there, um, just keep Marvel strong. Let's just keep uh, going, watching the movies, collecting the comics, buying the Build-A-Bears so that we can keep our, our heroes on the big screen. And again, I'll see you guys later. So enjoy. Talk to you.